Hey guys, it's JT Tran, and today I'm bringing you another slightly different video than I normally do. Here, I want to talk about this maybe potentially watershed moment with the Crazy Rich Asians movie. Now, why is it a watershed moment in like Asian American Hollywood cinema? Is because the last time we had what? Uh, an entire Asian American or westernized Asian uh, cast, right? Was gosh, 25 years ago with um, like the Joy Luck Club and like Better Luck Tomorrow. And for a moment there, we were thinking, oh my gosh, here it is, Asian Americans making a splash in the scene. And you know, there were certain problems with that, sure. Like the Joy Luck Club had its issues with like male representation and like the white savior complex. Uh, but here we are again, 25 years later with the Crazy Rich Asians movie. What did I think about it? You know what? I saw it. I had read the book before. I actually liked the book when it came out just because of its depiction of, you know, this Asian American um, outsider trying to make their way back into Asian society. And for those of us who are Asian American, we sort of know what that feels like. Right? We're Asian, but we're not quite Asian enough. And what did I think of the movie? You know what? I liked it a lot a lot more than I thought I would. Now, the movie itself had potentially, you know, when it was in production and casting, um, some some like rumors, and not even rumors, but just some controversy over the fact that, for example, there was like, uh, was it Henry Golding, all right, who plays Nick Young, the young, like, I guess, multi-billionaire scion of, of this fast fortune, and and he is, you know, Hapa. He's like half white, half Asian, or whatever mix. But, you know, people were saying, like, oh, he's, he's you know, because he looks white, he's not really Asian. Here's the thing, guys. You know what? I've taught a lot of like half Asian or quarter, whatever. And when they're out in the field and they look Asian, you know what? people treat them like Asia. Like, no one can really tell the difference, okay? It's not like, you know, the A-mogging, cop mogging white guys are like, oh, you know what? He's only a quarter Asian. Let's not mess with him and his girl. Or like, the girls themselves aren't gonna be like, oh, you know what? You're only like half Asian, so we're only gonna be like half racist to you, right? So, it's cool. You know what? He basically portrays the typical rom-com romantic lead, like, you know, Ryan Gosling. Um, fits it, you know, square jaw, good looking, you know, pretty built. Um, just the perfect sort of boyfriend uh, material for the female romantic lead. A little bit of a flat character, but you expect that from a romantic comedy. This isn't like high Shakespeare, so to speak. But what's really fascinating, and the actual production value of this movie is, is depiction of like Asian culture, right? In a very sort of like varied and positive sense. Now this is one of the biggest differences that I've seen between like Asian American male lit literature, right? Versus Asian American female literature is that you'll see in like the Joy Luck Club, how portions of Asian culture and just like one entire gender, like Asian men, are basically thrown under the bus, right? Here in more Asian male lit, uh, it's a celebration, all right, of Asian American, of Asian culture, of the women, all right, the women have all different roles, right, from like, you know, the, the, the matriarch, the powerful matriarch, all right, and the grandmother to Michelle Yeoh herself, the mother, and all the aunties, and then you got Peek Ling, who is like this sort of like you know, e e you know, ebonic sort of like, oh, what she, what uh, her dad, um, Kim Ji Young, called like the Asian uh, Ellen, right? So you know, you had like pretty wide array of of women characters, while the men themselves were like. Yeah, again, Ryan Gosling, the ethical best friend, then you got the party dude, then you got the douchebag Wall Street financier, the cheater guy, right? So you had like a pretty good array, while as opposed to like the old Joy Luck Club and more Asian female lit with like, you know, Celeste Nee and um, what's that one coming out on Netflix uh, to all the boys I love before, where that one is like, there are no Asian guys, right? 
when the Joy Luck Club, all the Asian men and Asian culture are just like horrible, bad, terrible, right? So from the Asian male point of view too, this is a pretty good movie. The men are like different types from the good guys to the comic relief to the slightly creepy but endearingly creepy like younger brother, right? To the cheater guy. But then also if you watch the uh, mid credit stinger, um, at, you know, kind of like the Marvel movies, is Harry Shum Jr. from Glee and from like some other, you know, shows uh, setting up the potential sequel, right? Uh, the next romantic lead, you know, spoiler alert, right? So I think from an Asian male point of view that this movie that looks like it's tracking to be a really huge haul, you know, maybe, uh, represents a pretty potentially you know, slightly changing moment of just Asian culture, you know, Asian American cinema uh, popularity. Because one of the things I noticed is there's this almost sort of like visual love affair with the Asian culture in the realm of like food. There is a lot of time spent on food. It's like its own character in the movie. And it isn't like when we were kids here in Asian, you know, as Asian Americans where we were made fun of for like, oh my God, that food is so stinky, it's weird. It looks like it's a celebration of it. Uh, the Asian like music, right? I mean, a lot of them were like covers of American songs, but in like Chinese. And it was like really cool. Like you could, you know, you knew what they're covering, but it sounded beautiful. Um, and then there, there's the fashion and of course the just over the top crazy rich Asian architecture and just, you know, the buildings and just, yeah, it is like the great Gatsby, but Asian like squared to a billion. So the question is also, is this really like a watershed moment? Okay. I think it's safe to say that it's going to rake in a good amount of money, right? I was reading this track in like 30 mil or something like that, which is like fantastic. But is it really going to change how Asians and Asian Americans are treated in America, just Western cinema? And uh, you know what? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, there's always hope. But I think that for those of you who follow me, I've never been that big of a proponent of just being a slave to Hollywood. I understand its effect. I'm aware that the cinema, Hollywood, are just, you know, kind of like propaganda in teaching, like, these are the types of culture people that you should go for, you know, what's good, what's bad. And this is like a simple, you know, to use a phrase, chink in the wall in the sort of stereotypes of racism and prejudice that Asians and Asian Americans face. Like, for example, when I was leaving, um, like, behind me were two, like, white girls, and one of the girls said, like, I just loved it, just loved it, right? It's one of my favorite movies, like, that's cool. Um, and like when I was sitting down and there was this black couple next to me and when Michelle Yeoh, the uh, Iron Maiden kind of mom, drops the hammer on Constance Wu about like, oh, you'll never like match up, you'll never measure up. And they were like, oh no, she did that bitch, right? They were really into it, right? And it, part of it is like American, is that, that, that yeah, it's materialistic, superficial, but it's that, that pursuit of like, wow, like, you know, you go from poor, you know, middle class to essentially, it is a you know, Cinderella you know, story uh, from rags to riches. Now, some Asians, and rightfully so, are gonna say like, oh, there's this kind of like class warfare. It's like, yeah, I mean, this is literally in the title. Crazy Rich Asians. It follows a Cinderella story. It is not about like the proletariat rising up against the bourgeois or anything like that. So for anyone thinking of like, you know, they're politically woke, it's not that. This is a fantasy. This is an Asian slash Asian American Cinderella fantasy. It's a romantic comedy. Um, so you gotta like measure, you know, your expectations here. And again, you gotta measure, manage your expectations when it comes to, it's gonna change all how, how we're gonna be treated here in America and West. It's not, okay? Yeah, a little bit of people are gonna like appreciate, hopefully, like Asian like food, culture, language, 
right? There is never like a weird moment like, oh, being Asian, you know, the dress, the way we look, the food, anything like that is weird. It's all a celebration. Uh, but this is, again, this is just a tiny sort of sand and essentially a generational, multi-generational uh, fight against the stereotypes that have built up. It's a great um, step. For sure, I like I said, I really, really like the movie. There is like a who's who of all types of Asian, you know, from Asian mainland to Asian American uh, actors and actresses. So hopefully this is like a stepping stone for them because how else are these actors and actresses going to go into other franchises, right? Everybody's gotta start somewhere. So there it is guys, the Crazy Rich Asians movie review from the Asian male perspective. I thought it was pretty good, like the Asian male characters themselves a little bit two-dimensional. That's simply because they are just a, the romantic male lead as in all romantic movies. There's a very right away from like the incredibly good looking like you know male lead, um, the best friend, the good guy to the douchebag Wall Street guy to the broski frat guy and, and the cheater. So there's a good representation of all the good, the bad, the ugly, right? It isn't just one thing. And the women themselves, you know, they've got a lot of things to potentially love in this movie. And just Asians, yeah, like, you know, it's not going to hit everything about political wokeness or anything like that, political activism, but I think it's a good step. And honestly, it's just a fun movie to watch. Maybe bring a date if you enjoy it, um, but support it. I, I definitely say, you know, $15 or movie pass or whatever you guys got. Anyways, uh, later on, we're going to be hitting back more of our dating and educational material, which has been taking a break from YouTube, but we've got more coming, including infill videos and educational and testimonials and hopefully just some fun stuff. So we're going to kick it back up our YouTube channel this year. So go ahead and subscribe. All right. And I will see you later. Bye guys. Hey there. Thanks for watching our video. I hope you liked it and make sure you guys subscribe to this channel and watch all our other videos. Great news too. Every Monday, we'll be putting out a new weekly video. That's right, we've got educational seminars, street interviews, uh, fun infield pickup videos, and anything else we can come up with that's fun for you guys to watch. So check back for that every Monday. Oh, and if that's not enough for you, remember that for the last 10 years, the ABCs of Attraction have been the finishing school for Asian gentlemen. So we've been teaching guys how to be better boyfriends, more confident, and better husbands. If you need that extra push, you can enroll in one of our classes. But until then, we'll see you every Monday. Bye.